Hey everyone, and welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. I know the tie-dye is probably making me look even more like the comic book guy, but I'm gonna own it a little today. I've been talking to clients about how to use their spa projects inside of ASP.NET Core or .NET 6 or .NET 5 projects. And I've had a bunch of different solutions. I've blogged about it more than I probably should, but it'll come up with a solution that feels like it is the least intrusive while allowing you to do the things you wanna do. Let me show you what I found out. So here we are in Visual Studio with just a plain old website. It's really just a file new on a web project, has some razor pages, has this very similar setup. And whether you're using .NET 6 or not, this may be all in program.cs or we might find it in startup.cs. But the same things are happening. We're setting up services and all of that. Over in Visual Studio Code, and we could do this all in Visual Studio Code. I just like to have the two options here. We have just a simple actually out of the box view CLI app. And what we're gonna be talking about doesn't rely on Vue. It could be Vue, it could be Angular, it could be Svelte, it could be React. That part doesn't matter. We're talking about some basic ideas of having a folder with client assets in it. So a spa or multiple spas that you wanna put on the page. We want to be able to build them and then figure out how to share them or how to put them inside the ASP.NET project. And there's a few ways we can go. And the most obvious way you could go is to actually serving directly from the service, install this in some small Docker container or on some machine and just serve the spa from some specific server. And when they hit that server, you can then make calls from your spa into another server that just hosts your API, for an example. In this case, you're not using any Razor or any of that. It could be a really simple API only server. And so that doesn't really require much thought because it's, you know, maybe closer to something like microservices where you can separate them and such. But that's not what we're really here to talk about. We're here to talk about being able to create and build this project inside of Visual Studio and even publish it as part of it instead of them being separate things. So we're going to put that on the back burner. What we really want to do, and I'll talk about it in development and then we'll talk about it in production. So if I run this serve, it's going to serve up our project over here in localhost. And anytime I make a change to the project, it's gonna recompile. It does it pretty quickly. It's a pretty good development experience and almost all of the spa have this sort of idea. It's not specific to view at all. And if we look at this app, it's just the simple app. It's all self-contained. It's being hosted on its own server, but this isn't what we want it to do. So what I would suggest is let's go ahead and open this folder in File Explorer. So we have our project and we have two different projects here. They obviously won't be in the same place. The client project and then the sub website. And I just want to put this inside the project. I'm just going to drag and drop it. Of course, I have to close Visual Studio Code to do that. I'll try again. And now our some website has that project. And you'll see this showed up inside of our project, right? so that one would like to be able to build this as well as host it here. And so there's a couple different strategies. The first thing I'll wanna do is actually go down to the package.json here, and I wanna add a third type here, because right now it has serve, which will recompile it and serve it. We have a build that builds a production version, and of course this will be a little different for different kinds of spas, but I'll show you how it looks in view for an example. And so the Vue CLI allows us to say, make sure and build this for development so we can more easily debug it. And then also watch, which will do that same thing of recompiling as we need. But we have sort of specific problem. Let's say if we open up our index page and we'd like to just get rid of all of this. Let's get rid of text center because that's not really helping us. We'd like to put our spa here. And the first thing you might want to do is go ahead and create a section called scripts. So we can put the scripts that this runs on. And when this builds, it actually creates it in this client dist folder. So in theory, we just want these three pieces to be included in this page. But of course, the client isn't accessible from the web server, right? It would need to be in WW root. And so there's a couple of different ways to handle this. In view.config, we can add an output path or an output dir, excuse me, and we can make it go to WW root client as a folder right? We can tell it when you build this, don't build it here, build it into our WW root folder. 
So I'm going to open up a console because running it in Visual Studio isn't going to automatically run that watch command. So I'm using the terminal inside of Visual Studio. This could be outside. doesn't really matter. And if we go into the client directory, it's a little hard for you guys to see the client directory, but trust me, it's because my PowerShell normally is dark and I haven't figured out how to make this one dark without making the whole UI dark. We're just going to go npm run watch. And this building for development will take a minute. It actually does it twice, and there's a variety of reasons for that, but we can see it's built these three JavaScript files that we're going to need to run our application. We actually need the chunk vendors and app to be added onto the page, and the about.js uh, will be loaded as needed. And so if we come up here back to our index.html, we'll see that we now have that client folder. If I start with the junk, I'll just say client JS chunk vendors. And I hate to keep on saying this, but of course, the nuance of how this works in other different kinds of spa projects, I'm hoping you can see a sense of what we're going to do here because it isn't specific to view in any way. And I'm going to go ahead and get the client JS app, right? And then we just need a div with the ID. And what is that ID, right? If we go ahead and look at our main.js, we'll see it's actually mounted in a pound app or an ID of app. So I'll just put app here and there's my div, right? And in theory, this should just work. This should just magically work. And so if I just run this project, we'll see we have that same project we had with the project and it mostly just works. Let's make a change to show you sort of what is happening here. And this may be related to Vue, but I think it talks about an overall problem because when we build it in Dist, you'll notice we get a number of things that we might need. So I'm going to add to the Assets folder. This is a folder that we can actually pull into it a larger image. And let's grab something that might be interesting to put in here. Let's put an angry cat in there. And let's go into the views, and that home view has a path to that asset. So what are we going to change this to? cat.jpg. If we come back here, no view logo, right? Why is it not doing this? And in fact, if we look at where it's being built now, there is an image that's trying to find it. But what we have to be aware in the way that building works, it's assuming some things about the path. And in the case of view, it's assuming that this image is going to be at the root of the server related to where it's being hosted. And that just doesn't work. And so instead of doing it that way, let's leave that image in. Let's do this in just a small different way. I'm going to stop our running project because I'm going to actually go back into our view.config in this case and remove where we changed where it was building. And in fact, I'll come up here to client and I'll get rid of that client. And so now we're just building it and it's going to compile itself into this dist folder for us. You may be asking yourself, why did my image not work and the other image worked? Inside view, if a file is below a certain threshold, it will actually inline it into the compiled code. And so the path didn't matter. It was actually embedded in the HTML. Once it gets beyond a certain size, like that image I showed you, it can't inline it. And so it tries to compile it for you. So instead of getting it from WW root, we'd like to get it from dist. You know, this is sort of what we talked about before. But in order to do that, we need to support it. And the support in ASP.NET for doing this is we'll leave static files. This is where it's going to get from www root by default. And we're going to actually add a second set of use static files. What we need is to add a new static file options object. And we're going to tell it that we want to apply a file provider. Essentially, we're going to tell it, hey, this is where this other folder you can look at is. And so we'll say new physical file provider, which we'll have to go ahead and get from Microsoft extensions. And this will take a string that is the root. And so I'm going to do this by saying path.combine. And I'm going to grab from that builder our environment and look at our content root path. So that's going to be the actual project, not WW root. If you want to get WW root, you get web root path. But we're looking at content root path. And then we're going to pass it the path of, big surprise, client dist forward slash so it works fine with the project. And because we don't specify anything else here, it's going to assume that it's going to also look in client dist when a file request comes in if it wasn't satisfied by this static file. So if it wasn't WW root, normally this would fall through and eventually do a 404 for that static file. We're going to say also look in this directory. What that allows us to do is in our index.cshtml, we just have to change these to be 
Node.js because it's going to take our client dist folder as our root. And so we'll be able to get these assuming that this is also like a root folder. So let's run this. We're still running and compiling it in the background. And now we have it working with our enormous file, right? And that's because the URL to this, let's look at the inspection real quick. Let's make this a lot bigger. It has embedded in it that the source should be slash image and then the name of the file. This is what didn't work before because we're putting it in one more subdirectory. And so this ends up being an easier way to do this. Obviously we would need to style this to make it smaller because it still is enormous no matter how much you shrink it. Oh, that's better. We can see the text down there. Okay, enough fun and games with that angry cat. And this works fine in development, but what about actual distribution or publishing of this project, which is gonna be a common case? And this is where we're gonna look at the project file. And here we wanna add something. We wanna add a way to build that project, and then we're going to need to include it into the build. So let's start by creating a target. And we're just going to give it a name, and I like to use pre-publish script. So this is going to be executed before the script is run, and before targets is before publish. Because remember, just building the .NET Core app, the .NET 6 app in this case, isn't going to automatically magically build that client. You're going to, in development, run it separately, but we need to have a way to actually run this. And so I'm going to just use exec and then put in a command. And first I'm going to say building view. And then I want to do the same thing. I want to say exec command. And in my case, I'm going to say npm ci, which is please install all the packages because you're not going to necessarily add those packages. But we're going to need to tell it what our working directory is. And this is a relative URL, so we can just say client slash. And then once it's executed, I'll just make a copy and paste and tell it to say npm run and build, right? So when we do the publish, we're going to get this to build, but we need to make sure that we also get this dist folder as part of that publish. And to make sure they're included, we have to create an item group and we're going to tell it that we have some content. We're going to include what? We're going to include client dist everything in that client disk. We're just going to use a mask there to get everything in that disk folder, not just the code files. And then we're going to say copy to output directory, preserve newest to make sure that it keeps whatever is the newest version of that file that's going to end up there. And remember, this isn't going to make it magically do anything during development. It's just going to make sure that this folder, whatever we find here, is going to end up in the output folder for you. So let's go ahead and publish that. And here it's going to install all the packages and then run that build building for production. And so if we open up that folder, we can see the client directory is just there, just like it would be for development. And in this case, it has those same files that we need, the JS, the image, etc. And then these are going to be possibly used during production. And you could go ahead and trim some of these by changing your CS proj file to support only certain files or only certain directories, if that's really what you wanted. But in this case, we're getting both of those worlds. But we do have a small problem. All our JavaScript files here have a string after them to break the cache. And in this case, this is an issue, right? Because we don't know what that's going to actually look like. So we need to make one more change. And that is back in the view.config. And so we're going to want to put file name hashing here and say false. So that in no case we'll actually add those hashes. Just to make sure that we have, let's go ahead and tell it to delete all existing files before we do the publish just so that we get it all changed. And let's go ahead and publish it again. And now that it's published it, let's go ahead and open the folder. And we'll see that our client directory and dist are still there, just like we wanted them to be. And if we go into the JS, we'll see our project files now that we've turned off file name hashing. So we won't have any of those other issues. You'll need to handle cache busting in a different way if you need that in your project but we're getting all the right files. And this is also going to give us the same for the images and of course all the CSS that was built in app as well. So please ask questions in the comments if you'd like. Of course, subscribing to the channel and liking this video really helped me a lot. So if you don't mind doing that, and hopefully this has been clear enough to show you some different options for publishing your spas within an ASP.NET project. See you next time.